good afternoon, buenos dias, buenas tardes. My name is Lina. I will just wave hello and I will be supporting this webinar today on Studying USA from Portugal. So likewise, I would like to know where is everyone joining us from? I prepared a beautiful webinar with three amazing ladies from Loyola Marymount University, Christy Culp, joining us from sunny California. We have Alex Jones from the Very Creative SCAT, and we have Margaret Burke from Education USA in Costa Rica, the happiest country in the world. So as you can see, we are well prepared to host a very exciting webinar today. I would like to invite our presenters to quickly introduce them. And then we will start with introducing Education USA as a study destination, and that would be Margaret's presentation. And this is Margaret. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Good Margaret afternoon. from Education USA Costa Rica. Hi, Alex. How are you doing today in Savannah? I'm good, thank you. My name is Alex Jones and I'm the Associate Director of Admission at SCAD. And last but not least, we have Christy Culp from Loyola Marymount, who will just in a second appear on your screen and you'll enjoy her presentation after Education USA's. So after the universities have done presenting, we will go back to all your questions. So we encourage you to ask us whatever is not clear or if you have any personal questions, related to your personal interest in the chat, which you can find in the right hand side of your screen. We would also like to ask you, where is everyone joining us from today? Because we want to speak your language possibly or uh, know what kind of support you may need. So let us know in the chat, where are you joining us from today? And without further ado, let us start with Education USA's presentation. Margaret, welcome, the floor is yours. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Um, as Lena said, my name is Margaret. Um, most people call me Mo actually, and I am located in San Jose, Costa Rica. And I work for Education USA. But before explaining to you what Education USA is, I would like to start and talk about why would you want to study in the United States or why should you study in the United States? Um, because all of you are here, obviously, because of your interest in US universities and colleges. I would think that one of the reasons is because of the quality education that we offer in the United States. We work with accredited universities and colleges, which means that every few years, the universities and colleges are going through a rigorous process to accredit themselves in terms of good education, good professors, that all of the graduates are graduating from the university with all of the skills and knowledge that they need. Another common reason um, that people want to study in the United States is because of our unique degrees and institutions. In the United States, we have 4,700 options in terms of universities and colleges. So we have options for you in terms of if you want a small university, medium or large, if you want private or public, religious or not religious, if you want it in the city or in the in more in the country, right? And we also have unique degrees. We have a lot of areas that are not popular in other parts of the world like cybersecurity, biomedical engineering, aerospace sciences. So we have a lot of unique options in terms of majors and the type of university that you want to study in. We also offer you a life-changing experience. If you study in the United States, you will likely return to your home country or go to another country, um, bilingual, bicultural, and hopefully with international uh, work experience. With the student visa, the F1 student visa, you can work up to 20 hours per week on the campus. And during summer and vacation, you can work up to 40 hours a week. Another interesting part to mention is that with the student visa, the F1 visa, after you graduate, you can extend your student visa for one year with the program that's called OPT, Optional Practical Training in which you can apply to jobs and apply your knowledge from the degree that you just got. If it is an area in STEM, science, technology, engineering, or math, you can extend it for another two years. So in theory, you could work for up to three years after you graduate from your US institution or college with this extension of the F1 visa. Another common reason that people would like to study in the United States is because of our flexibility to change your mind, to change your path. I cannot speak for all of the countries in Latin America, but in Costa Rica, when you enter a public university, you have to know what you want to study that first year. And if you 
change your mind, you have to wait until the next school year to solicit a change, right? And if you change universities, you have to start from zero. In the United States, changing your major or the area that you want to study is something relatively normal and easy. And if you are studying at one university and you don't really like it, you can change or transfer to a second university and almost all of your credits, if not all of your credits, will follow you to that second institution. So that's great because we're all young, we don't know what we want to do, maybe we start college and we, we want to be an engineer and then we realize we want to be an English teacher, right? So we have that flexibility at our U.S. universities and colleges. Now to explain what is Education USA, the program that I'm representing, sorry, wrong side, representing today. Um, Education USA is a program that exists around the world and we offer free educational advising in the process of applying to US colleges and universities. So we explain everything you need to know about the process, how to do the process. We kind of hold your hand along the way and we are located all around the world. In Costa Rica, we have one center located in San Jose, Costa Rica, but we offer virtual advising to all parts of Costa Rica. Um, so if you're interested in finding the closest center to you, you should head to educationusa.state.gov, which I'll put at the very end, to find the closest advising center to you. For example, in Mexico, I believe we have 26 advising centers, so it really depends on your country to see where the closest center is. We offer the most up to date um, information about US universities and colleges and we are unbiased, which means we do not favor specific universities and colleges, but rather represent all of the universities and colleges that we have in the United States. So some common questions that I like to talk about before we get started um, is the most common question we receive in Education USA and the biggest misconception is if Education USA has scholarships. Education USA is not a scholarship program. It is an educational advising program, which means we do not offer you the funds, we do not offer you the scholarships or the money, but we guide you to the opportunities that exist, most likely directly from the university or college, right? So Education USA is not a scholarship program, but rather an educational advising program. Many times we get the questions if there are opportunities to improve your English. If you are hoping to study uh, an academic program, you should already have a high intermediate to advanced level of English, but universities and colleges today also offer intense English programs where you can go and live on campus and take classes, but instead of taking biology or anatomy, you would take English classes. Another question we often get is if we can help you find a short-term study abroad. We focus on higher education and everything that universities and colleges offer. So we focus on, you know, associate's degrees, bachelor's degrees, master's, doctorates, and intensive English programs. And if we offer internships abroad, we do not offer internships abroad in the sense that you can go from zero and start to work. But as I mentioned, the student visa, the F1 student visa, has the option to extend the visa for up to one year in um, non-STEM areas and up to three years in STEM areas to work in the United States loyally, uh, legally. Sorry. Um, the next question we get is if we have partnerships or agreements with specific U.S. colleges and universities. No. As I mentioned, we are unbiased, which means we do not favor specific universities or colleges, but rather represent all of them because we want to help you find the best university for you as a young person, as a student, as a professional. Moving forward. Um, what do we do if we don't do those things? We help you in the five steps to U.S. study. The first step would be to research your options in terms of uh, helping to bring that list of 4,700 universities to a smaller list of eight to 10 universities that you're interested in. We help you with the best search engines, everything you need to know in that process. Step number two, we talk about how you plan to finance your studies. If you're looking for merit-based aid, need-based aid, if you hope to live in a specific state near a relative, and the third step is probably the longest step, which is how, um, how to complete your application. What are the standardized tests? Where are they offered? How often? How can I prepare for them? Um, I need help with my essay. We can help you with all of that. Four would be apl applying for your visa. That um, we explain how it, the application process for the F1 visa works so that you have the best chance of getting that visa when you go to the embassy for your appointment. And step five is um, calling a called pre-departure orientation. 
which is a, we have an event where we explain all of the things you need to know before you go. So how do taxes work in the United States? How does health insurance work in the United States? What are some cultural differences um, that we have um, between academic life in the United States versus academic life in Latin America? So moving forward, I wanted to highlight one event that we have in Central Mexico, North America, which would be Canada, Mexico, Central America, and, and the Caribbean. We have been organizing webinars. We will have Webinar Wednesday, and we will be tackling various parts of the uh, application to better help you. So our next one is um, a week from this Wednesday, which is June 17th, and we will be talking about things to consider when you're looking for universities. Other than location, how can you research and get a true feel for that university? So I have a question here, someone asking me if the SAT is still needed. Many universities have colleges have taken away the requirement for the SAT or ACT, but some of them still ask for them. Or the universities and colleges that say they're not required to get into the university say that you do need them to be eligible for scholarships. So it really depends on each university or college if they need the um, SAT or ACT. Um, please check us out at educationusa.state.gov. You can look for the closest Education USA Center to you. You can also find a list of all of the webinars we have coming up in the next few months and all of the free services that we offer around the world. I am now going to give the mic over to Christy Culp from Loyola Marymount to talk about her institution in the beautiful state of California. Thank you so much, Mo. That was a great presentation. It's including a lot of questions, so we'll get back to everyone at the end. And now we'll enjoy a short video of Loyola Marybound, and then Christy will talk about her university. Enjoy. And I'm the Associate Director of International Admission at Loyola Marymount University. Um, I cover all of Latin America, so all of the uh, applicants that are applying to Loyola Marymount uh, out of Latin America are read by me. Um, so I'd like to share with you a little bit more about Loyola Marymount. We are uh, in Los Angeles. Los Angeles is a large city, so to give you an idea, uh, we're about five minutes from the airport. You can see the airport in the background of this photo here. And this uh, animated map, not to scale, you can also see that we are about a kilometer from the beach. So we're about five minutes from the airport, one kilometer from the beach. If you're familiar with the neighborhoods of Santa Monica, Venice Beach, Marina del Rey, those are all located within uh, a few miles, one to five miles from campus. So. Now that you have an idea sort of where we're located in Los Angeles, let me share that we are also a private Jesuit institution. In the United States, there are 27 Jesuit institutions, um, our colleagues being Boston College, uh, University of San Francisco, Georgetown, Loyola, Chicago, Loyola, New Orleans, et cetera. Um, so again, we are one of 27. We are the only Jesuit institution in uh, Southern California. So what is a Jesuit institution? What does a Jesuit education mean? It is a tradition that is 500 years in the making that focuses on three aspects of your education. First off, um, we encourage learning, lifelong learning. Um, so we are encouraging students to be curious, not just uh, to get an education and to memorize and regurgitate the information on a test, but truly to relate math to science, to history, to psychology, and have a hunger for learning for the rest of their lives. Um, that second piece of the Jesuit um, mission 
is education of the whole person. So we're going to give you a fabulous education. However, you're more than just an intellectual being. You're a personal being. You're a social being. You're a professional being. So we have massive student services to help develop those other pieces of who you are that I will touch on a little bit later in uh, the presentation. And lastly, that third prong of the mission is the service of faith and promotion of justice. In layman's terms, it means make the world a better place because you're in it. Figure out how to apply your giftings and callings and give back to your community. So these are the seeds that we're planting in our students with a fabulous education that's highly ranked within the US, uh, but with this sense of social responsibility. So we're a medium-sized institution. We have about 6,600 undergraduates. I have an average class size of 20, and I have one professor for every 10 students. That means that you're going to get a mentor-mentee relationship with your professor. Uh, while once you leave the classroom, you won't run out of uh, new people to meet. Kind of gives you an idea the size of the institution. Now, we are located in Los Angeles, and as any Jesuit institution, we identify with the city. So when you think of Los Angeles, you think of creative economy, including film production and animation and all that goes into that business. Um, you think of technology. Um, but did you know we are also one of the centers for defense contracting and engineering? Uh, we are surrounded by Tesla, SpaceX, Boeing, Raytheon, and all the tech companies, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, et cetera. Um, so when you think of the industries of Los Angeles, those are the majors, those are the courses of study that LMU has uh, developed over 100 years with the city. So we develop the students and produce the, the workforce to, to supply the need in the city. So we are highly ranked in engineering, to give you an idea what students are doing uh, after graduating from LMU, uh, one of our alumni went on to found SpaceX with uh, two other people, Elon Musk, his name is Tom Mueller. I encourage you to corroborate my story. Uh, we're also known for entrepreneurship and business and marketing. Uh, we focus on uh, digital marketing, so your generation's marketing. Uh, you do classes, have classes on campus, we take you to YouTube, we take you to Facebook and Snapchat so that you learn that digital marketing piece at the best companies that are doing it in the world, um, at, which are very close to campus, uh, a short shuttle ride away. Film production. If you watch The Hunger Games, you watched a production uh, that was directed by one of my alumni, Francis Lawrence. Uh, if you watch American Horror Story, it's written, produced, directed by a guy named James Wong. Uh, for you older counselors, if there are any out there, if you watch The X-Files, he also had a hand in those as well. Um, if you watch Johnny Bravo, uh, an animated uh, cartoon, um, that was created, that was a homework assignment in my animation department. To give you an idea of the things that Loyola Marymount is good at, we're also great in theater. Being in Los Angeles, obviously, you, to make a film, you have to have actors, film producers, directors, et cetera. So now that you have, are familiar with what we are most known for, we have over 60 majors and over 50 minors um, to choose from within five schools. We also have a uh, fabulous student experience on campus. There's over 200 clubs and organizations. Uh, right now we have 19 residence halls. By the fall, we'll have 21 residence halls. Uh, we have nine on, uh, on campus landing locations. We have division one sports. So if you are an athlete that's representing your province or your country, you could be at that level of LMU sports. Um, we are most known for the beachy or American sports such as beach, sand, volleyball, and baseball. That's, uh, those are the uh, sports that we have excelled in in the last few years. Um, in terms of employment positions on campus, there are thousands available for both international and domestic students. For international students, there's over 1,500 vetted internship opportunities off campus where the companies reach out to us to list it on our website. And those companies include some very uh, impressive names, which I'll mention a little bit later. 
We also are all number three in the US out of 4,500 institutions for the number of hours our students are dedicating to community service. Again, it's a values-based education of social justice. Um, and we have over 80 study abroad experiences available for students that are looking to diversify their educational experience abroad. So once again, here is our location, one kilometer from the beach, five minutes from the airport, just below where you, we are near the water, you can see Silicon Beach here. Um, that's actually called Playa Vista. And um, a lot of the tech companies have moved from Silicon Valley down to surround our campus. So to give you an idea who surrounds our campus, here is a list of uh, companies. This is an older list actually from 2015. And in the last five years, we've had many more come to campus. So you can see EA Sports, Facebook, IMAX, uh, Microsoft. Um, there's also YouTube, et cetera, uh, right off our campus. This tuft of grass by the numbers in the bubbles, that is campus. You could literally ride a bike, not pedal, roll down the bluff and go to your internship at EA Games, Riot Games, um, Univision, which is right on the other side of campus as well. So we know that you go to college for a reason, to, be, to develop yourself as a professional. And so we have massive services for career and professional development uh, for our um, students. We give soft skill workshop, uh, practicing for interview questions. We will help you write your resume. We'll uh, help you uh, write your cover letter. Um, we may even reach out to a hiring manager of an internship that you're applying for. To give you an idea of the outcomes, every year it's a different number, but this last year uh, you can see that uh, we are 97% employed for the class of 2019. For the class of 2018, we were 99% employed six months after graduation. You can see a few icons here of where my alumni were working afterwards and where they were going to school. If you go to outcomes.lmu.edu, here at the bottom, you would be able to list, you would be able to see the list, the composite list of where that class is, is working, where they're going to school. You can even break it down by the college. Do you wanna see what students are doing from the creative economy, where they're working in the um, television industry, uh, in the engineering industry? You would be able to, uh, break down that information into smaller bite-sized pieces in the exact majors and schools that you're looking to, to, to research. Here are a few, uh, if you recognize any of these companies, these are a few companies where my class of 2019 are working. Again, we have massive student services available uh, for the development of the student um, based on from ethnicity, to religion, to tutoring, to international student support, et cetera. We are currently 10% international. Our international students represent 90 plus countries. But Los Angeles is a city of 200 languages and many of us speak another language at home. So you, if you were an international student, you'd feel quite at home uh, on campus uh, in a large uh, metropolitan city like Los Angeles. Application process, number one, pick an application. We have three, number two, Provide English proficiency. We accept TOEFL, IELTS, a Pearson Test of English, Duolingo. If you think that you qualify for a waiver, reach out, we'll consider it. Number three, a letter of academic recommendation. Uh, number four, this is exciting. Uh, Loyola Marymount has been test optional for a number of years. So that ACT or ACT are not required for admission. They are required uh, to be considered for the most generous merit scholarships. I have uh, a few different um, deadlines for fall. November 1st is early action, uh, early decision. January 15th is regular decision. And if you were interested in coming uh, to campus in January, we also have a January term and that deadline is October 15th. So I'd like to invite you if you have questions, if you'd like to meet with us individual, individually for a coffee chat, um, please uh, visit uh, international.lmu.edu slash visit. Sign up for a Zoom meeting or just drop in our office hours or send us an email, whichever mo makes most sense for you. Uh, we are open and here for you to answer your questions. We'll even put you in touch with current students so that you can ask questions to them that you wouldn't ask us. 
So I would like to thank you. Uh, and before I turn it over to my esteemed colleague, we do have uh, international student scholarships um, from my office. They range from 2,000 to 20,000. Our dean also has academic scholarships that cover the cost of attendance. Students would generally, if they were uh, awarded that award, it's called a trustee scholarship, they would basically be paying for their student fees and books. I also have athletic scholarships. Those are administered by the athletic department, depending on the needs of the team and the roster. So if you are, once again, performing at the level of uh, representing your country or your region, uh, reach out to us. You can send an email to international at lmu.edu with your video. We will send it to uh, the coaches. If they respond, that is a sign that they're interested. If they do not, that's also a sign. Uh, but uh, reach out to us and we'd be happy to help you through that process. And I'd like to turn um, the mic over to my SEAM colleague from a fabulous creative institution called SCAD, Alexandra, I yield the floor. Much. We will now enjoy a video of SCAD and then lovely Alex Jones will talk about uh, the creative careers over there. And you guys get ready for a really colorful presentation. Here it comes. I'm driven to create. To be expressive. To collaborate with only the best and across disciplines. My mentors are unparalleled in their fields and elevate my artistry, always pushing me forward. All of us are waiting for you to tell us what's next. You are going to be the generation that changes it all. I absolutely love SCAD. I love SCAD too. I love it more than John Krasinski. SCAD has an absolutely phenomenal reputation. It's this amazing creative hub. You feel the energy behind the students, behind the faculty. It's incredible. It's contagious. We are global citizens who think beyond borders and boundaries. And our conversation depends on each other. It kind of opens your eyes to what the world has to offer, and that's one of my favorite things about SCAD. I am an artist. I'm a designer. I am a performer. An athlete. An inventor. Entrepreneur. Storyteller. My SCAD family are the best friends that I have in my life. They are my strongest network still. It's just a proud thing to say, you know, I'm from SCAD, I graduated from SCAD. I'm designing my own reality. And expressing my voice. Our SCAD story starts here, but never stops. Thanks to SCAD, my future as a creative professional is real. It's happening. This is SCAD. Our hive, our home. Hello everyone, my name is Alex Jones, Associate Director of Admission, and I would like to introduce you to SCAD, the Savannah College of Art and Design. SCAD was founded in 1978, and for more than 40 creative years, we have grown to become the most comprehensive and connected art and design university in the world, with locations in Atlanta and Savannah, Georgia, Lacoste, France, and online via SCAD eLearning. From day one, SCAD has served as a preeminent source of knowledge in every discipline we teach. The university is incredibly diverse, with more than 15,000 students representing all 50 United States and more than 100 countries. In fact, 27% of the current SCAD student population is international, representing 118 different countries around the world. We offer more programs of study and specializations than any other art and design university in the US with over 100 degree programs across more than 40 majors and more than 75 minors. Some examples of these programs include our award-winning fashion department, which consistently earns high praise from the business of fashion, the world's paramount resource for fashion's creatives. Our interior design programs rank number one in America's best architecture and design schools by Design Intelligence. And our motion media design program 
considered the best in the world by the rookies, dubbed the Oscars for its creative minds. Our architecture program features the groundbreaking integrated path to architectural licensure, an accelerated academic track that prepares students for a professional license in as few as seven years, compared to the traditional route of 11 to 15 years. The Hollywood Reporter places our production design program and custom design minor among the top in the nation and the world with graduates who work at major studios and film companies, as do our illustration graduates, who master multiple forms of animation and production in a program lauded by the Animation Career Review. Career preparation is a foundation of SCAD, as evidenced by the university's stellar alumni employment rate, 99% of spring 2018 alumni were either employed seeking further education or both within 10 months of graduation. And 92% of those alumni are working in a creative field. These extraordinary numbers are a testament to our talented and ambitious students, and they speak volumes about the quality of a SCAD education. SCAD alumni and their work are everywhere. If you watch the Academy Award-winning film Zootopia or Frozen, then you've seen the work of SCAD visual effect alumnus Mirza Far Ali. He built an immer immersive and complex digital world for other hit films such as Moana, The Incredible Hulk, X-Men First Class, and Spider-Man 3. If you tune into the Netflix series Godless, then you have seen the star making turns by SCAD performing arts graduate Kaylee Carter. She booked her earliest acting gigs through the SCAT Performing Arts Showcase and the SCAT Casting Office before moving on to major roles in films like Private Life, starring alongside Paul Giamatti and Katherine Hahn. SCAT graduates include graphic design alumna India Hayes, who employs retro style illustrations to address hot button political topics, global social issues, and heartwarming human interest stories in her graphic packages and animations for CNN. From fashion to industrial design and beyond, SCAD graduates are transforming industries with their signature lines and stellar work, like Honda senior motorcycle designer, Erin Dunchy, who has more than 20 patents to his name. Photography graduate Ann Lee has captured stars like Camila Cabello, Mariah Carey, John Legend, Kate Hudson, and Sarah Jessica Parker for GQ, Harper's Bazaar, and Scene. Winner of the 2019 Council of Fashion Designers of America Vogue Fashion Fund and the 400,000 cash prize that goes with it, Christopher John Rogers has quickly ascended the ranks of the fashion world. Following his graduation from SCAD, Rogers has dressed fashion forward celebrities like Michelle Obama, Lizzo, and Whoopi Goldberg. At the age of 24, SCAD alumna Valeria Rocha has already been dubbed an artistic genius by pop icon Taylor Swift who personally recruited Rocha to photograph the Eurydice album cover of Lover, as well as the entire arsenal of promotional shots that tease one of the decade's most popular albums. This is just a small selection of the accomplished family of SCAD alumni, which includes award winners, visionary innovators, and leaders in art, fashion, design, and more. These alumni had different backgrounds and interests, but they had this in common. They wanted to follow their passion. They wanted to make a living. And they started right where you are today. As a student, you will be able to work with leading companies through SCAD Pro, where students dream up design solutions for global, global brands. One of our recent projects requires students to plan liftoff stations for the aerial ride-sharing network Uber Elevate. In less than a decade, SCAD Pro has hosted more than 500 collaborations with 300 brand partners 
leading to over 190 job offers and 50 products to market. The partnerships through SCAD Pro frequently result in internships and full-time jobs. Proof that real-world experience will set you apart from the competition and bring your creative career then much closer to reality. With locations in Atlanta, Lacoste, France, Savannah, and online via SCADI Learning, from day one, SCAD has served as the preeminent source of knowledge in every discipline we teach. In Atlanta, you will be plugged into the city's bustling midtown area, close to museums, parks, music venues, sport arenas, and more. SCAD Atlanta students are tapped into the dynamic film and television scene in Georgia, one of the top markets for feature film production in the world. Rich with the history and culture of Provence, Lacoste promises to inspire its visiting students as they live and study in a creative retreat in a meticulously preserved hilltop village of stone buildings, some built over a thousand years ago. From this idyllic home in the French countryside, students travel throughout the region to further their creative passions, including field trips to historic sites, excursions exploring the artistic beauty of Paris, and collaborations with major companies across Europe. And finally, a look at our Savannah location, where you will live, learn, and play in one of the country's most celebrated national historic landmark districts close to the scenic beaches and tropical palm trees of coastal Georgia. SCAD is woven into the fabric of the city with more than 80 restored buildings throughout Savannah, hosting cutting edge resources to expand your creativity. SCAD e-learning enables you to take classes from anywhere across the globe. The innovative platform features the same classes, renowned faculty, and support services that form the foundation of all SCAD locations. So, while you're home for the summer or completing an internship overseas, you can seamlessly continue your SCAD education online. For those of you ready to enroll full-time, SCAD offers rolling admission. This means you can apply at any time throughout the year and start at SCAD in September, January, March, or June. The first step in the application process is to complete your application form. Completing the initial ap application form is simple. It takes only about 10 minutes. Our admission process is selective, so we do encourage you to submit your application early. And remember, you are eligible to apply with one year left in high school, so in your junior year. As soon as your application form is submitted, you will be assigned a personal admission advisor who will walk you through the remaining steps of the process. These advisors are experts on SCAD and they will be able to answer any questions that you or your parents may have. The first step in the application process, as mentioned before, is our application form online, which is about 10 minute background questionnaire. Once paired with a personal advisor, you will begin submitting your documents, such as your high school transcript and proof of English proficiency. International applicants don't need to submit the ACT or ACT scores. Simply by applying, you will be automatically considered for academic scholarship. You also have the opportunity to submit a portfolio for an achievement scholarship, and these two scholarships can be stacked. We always encourage students to visit the campus, whether in person, whenever possible, or through a daily virtual tour, which you can find in our website. And of course, you can always connect with us. Our admission team has staff working with students all over the world, and we are eager to help you. You can also follow us on social media. There are countless reasons to choose SCAD, from our trailblazing academics to our championship athletic programs featuring esports to our industry partnerships. But in the end, you know that every element of life at SCAD is designed to help you turn your passion into your profession. Thank you very much, and I would like to open the floor for questions. Thank you, Alex. Did I tell you it will be a very colorful presentation? So now I'm inviting our speakers to start answering the questions. We have quite a few, so uh, stay with us. We hope we'll be able to answer everyone. 
the first question would be what is the difference between SAT and a ACT and I think the best one to answer would be Mo so I will pass the word so the SAT and ACT are a little different um, in terms of what they offer and how they are graded. Um, the ACT has four parts, English, math, reading, and science. And the SAT only has two parts, which would be verbal, which is often reading um, and you know, reading comprehension, um, writing in language, and then quantitative, which is a math section, both with and without calculators. So the ACT, for example, has a science portion and the SAT does not. Um, they are about the same length in terms of how long you take them. They're both three hours without the essay. With the essay, the SAT is a little bit longer, closer to four hours, and the ACT is three and a half hours. Um, they're also graded differently. Since there are only two parts on the SAT, each part is worth 800 points for a maximum grade of 1,600. The ACT is actually on a scale of 1 to 36. 36 is the maximum grade. Um, and they're very similar in pricing. There's not a big difference there. It's very similar. Um, you can take practice tests for both to see which one you prefer. And it also could depend on um, how close the testing center is to you and your country. Um, if there's a lot of SAT options, not so many ACT, you would have to look at a little bit further in how you would take the ACT if that's the exam of your choice. So now we're gonna do another question. Um, Christy, can you go over, it says, does LMU offer scholarships? I know you mentioned it at the very end, but we're not sure if you could go over it again. Sure. So our scholarships are based on um, some type of merit. So uh, it could be scholarship, academic preparation, uh, which uh, the most generous scholarships are based on academic preparation. Uh, so we have two for our international students. One is called a global scholarship and that ranges from 2000 to 20,000. That comes out of the international admission office. And then our Dean has a very generous scholarship that goes to the top 1% of uh, the applicant pool that covers full cost of attendance. So uh, basically those students that are amazingly prepared uh, will receive a, uh, what they call a trustee scholarship. Understand that it's not just based on the numbers, so you could have a fabulous GPA and a fabulous uh, standardized test score, but it's more about the whole package of who you are as a person. Being a Jesuit institution, we're also looking for those other factors that meet with the mission. So you uh, students that have an interest in social justice somehow are giving back to their community or that have uh, um, some type of beautiful story that goes along with their experience, those are generally the students that are selected. Um, I did have a number of international students that were selected for those full tuition room and board um, scholarships. Uh, one was from Latin America uh, this last year. Um, and he actually, before he came to campus, um, was invited as he was a trustee scholarship, was invited by Google to come to campus for 30, day, 30 days before classes started. So he was mentored by Google. By the end of that mentorship, before classes started, they asked him to apply to one of their internships and he's doing a virtual internship wow. with them this summer. And he's just completed his very first year of uh, engineering physics degree. So That's we amazing. also have, it is, it is a very good uh, opportunity, especially for um, students from our region, my favorite students. Um, we also have, uh, again, uh, athletic scholarships. So if you are representing your region, if you're representing your country, we're division one sports, which means it's the highest level, just below that Olympic level of athletics, uh, we have sports scholarships that are administered by the athletics department. Um, again, like I said, this last year, we were most successful in baseball. We beat out our lovely uh, sister institution here in uh, Los Angeles, UCLA for at least one game. Uh, and they beat us out in the end, but we got one on them at the very end of the season. So we went very far in the season. Um, and we were the regional champions for women's beach sand volleyball. So awesome. again, we're in Los Angeles, right? You gotta take advantage of, of your, <laughs> what you got. Uh, so we do have, uh, 
a few types of scholarships. Again, a global scholarship from 2000 to 20,000, and then a trustee scholarship that covers the full cost of tuition, room, and board, and athletic scholarships for those uh, athletes that are performing at a very, very high level. Awesome. So we had another question. Um, in the United States, what is the path to college for international relations? Um, so most universities or colleges offer international relations or some or international studies, something related. And typically that is a, a major that you can apply to your first year and get directly into. Some universities and colleges will have a separate application process to enter into the major after your first or second year of general classes. But typically you would just need to look for universities and colleges that offer international relations and also have the other things that you think are important to have in the university. Another question that we have is if TOEFL is mandatory. I don't know if Alex wants to explain um, the English proficiency they ask for at SCAD and then maybe Christy could also mention which ones they ask for at Loyola Marymount so we can compare. Of course, at SCAD, we do require a proof of English proficiency for those students whose English is not the first language. Um, we accept the TOEFL score, the IELTS score. Currently, we are accepting the Duolingo. Um, we also have about 11 other different waivers. It will depend, for example, on what school you attended, if the last four years were in a primarily English-speaking school, um, if you happen to be applying for a graduate degree, if you did your undergraduate in, um, in English already, or, you know, if you are a U.S. citizen, even though you live abroad. So, again, we have about 12 different options. Um, but if English is not your first language, we will require some kind of proof. And then if you don't have any proof, we also offer an English placement test that you can take during orientation. Okay. Christy, which, so, which exams do you guys have? Uh, very similarly, we look at TOEFL, IELTS, uh, Duolingo, which is a very nice test which, that you could take at home in the comfort of your own home with your own computer. Um, and the barrier to entry is quite low. It's uh, less expensive than the other tests. Uh, we have a number of waivers as well. Uh, one of them being if you're studying IB and are achieving uh, five in English, not ESL English, but regular English, we'll give you a waiver. If you have studied for a number of years at a US institution, high school, we'll give you a waiver. Uh, if you've taken AP classes, uh, we'll give you a waiver. But there are many, many different uh, pathways to achieving a waiver for English proficiency. Um, so if you think that you qualify, go ahead and reach out to us. We'd be happy to help you uh, with, uh, with that decision process. Right. Yes. So as they both mentioned, universities and colleges, if you want to enter an academic program, need to see that you do speak English at the level that they need. Um, but there's lots of options. As both of them mentioned, you have Duolingo at home. There's now a TOEFL at home option, IELTS. There's a lot of other options. And someone um, on the same topic asked, what is the time validity for the TOEFL if I took the exam a few years ago? The TOEFL is valid for two years, as Christy is holding up her fingers, two years. Um, so if it was more than two years ago, you would in theory need to retake it. But as we mentioned, you can look into other options that may be able to take at home or cheaper, depending on what the university is asking you for, the university that you're applying to. Um, I'm gonna kind of explain a little bit the, the, the reason behind that. I am a trained language professor. Language is alive. And so if you don't use it, it can come go back into the resources of your brain. After two years, if you're continuously using English, your English is far better than it was two years ago. So it's really in your best interest to take the test once again to demonstrate the level of English that you have achieved. So it really is in your best interest. I hope that's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, Alex, could you maybe explain to us um, if a a student with an F-1 visa, if they could work outside of the university campus? Nope. The F-1 student visa allows you to work with the institution that you're attending a maximum of 20 hours per week um, during the regular semesters or quarters in our case, and then 40 hours per week during the break um, of summer. Uh, otherwise, you cannot and you are not legally allowed to work outside of the institution. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're about to graduate and then you can apply for what it's called the OPT, the Optional Practical Training. And depending on your program, you may be allowed to work for a year or two 
um, and request for an extension, um, please check with your international student um, advisors, depending on your program. So if right. you're also taking a course that requires an internship, for example, there are many cases on LMU's campus where a business class, a Spanish class, um, you name it, engineering class could require either scholarship research or an internship off campus, you would be able to apply through our Office of International Student Services to be qualified uh, through USCIS to work off campus. No, those internships can be paid um, and they can not be paid. So you, you do have the opportunity to, to, to do an internship off campus if it's related to what you're studying. But this idea of being able to work off campus um, to, to have some pocket money, that is not the purpose of an F1 visa. But um, again, the, the loophole to that, or the, uh, if, you, if you take advantage of the requirements of uh, your courses and what you're studying, there is opportunity. So going along the same line, um, someone wanted to ask if they could do the CPT or the OPT off campus. So yes, as Alex mentioned, the OPT is a program um, and OPT stands for Optional Practical Training. It is a legal extension of your student visa to work in the United States paid or unpaid for one year after graduation. Depending on the area of study, if it's a STEM major, you could extend it for two years more. Um, this will always be done hand in hand with your international student, uh, student services office. There's also the option for CPT, which can be done after one academic school year. So that would be like a summer internship where you're not taking classes and you just want to do your internship during the summer, but not on campus. This could be done through the CPT. Again, you have to do paperwork with your international student services. But if you're asking if you can, you know, work as a waitress at a restaurant or, or something like that, that is likely not related to your degree, so that would be a no. You could find work on campus, working at a campus coffee shop or in the library or anything along those lines, but off campus um, would only be through specific internships through the university or the OPT or CPT programs. So another question that we have, um, is if you both could talk about what is the cost of living on campus I, it says in the university so i assume they mean like if they were to live in the dorm what's the estimated cost of living on campus for one year i'll alex go ahead and and uh begin i'm uh i'll yield the floor to you yes, yes thank you so at cad it's not mandatory to live on campus not even the first year you do have the option to live in the dormitories in our residence halls. The cost of the dormitories varies considerably depending on the style of dormitory that you choose. And it goes from about $10,000 an academic year to around $16,000 an academic year. Um, we do have a, in, in particular with SCAD, we do have a breakdown in our website that you can take a look. But the cost of living um, on campus varies from university to university. So these amounts are specifically for SCAD. Um, and they also, in those costs, um, there's also to consider the meal plans that are required for any student living on campus. Well said, and it's very similar at Loyola Marymount. We have a variety of options for you. Uh, we have single rooms, we have double rooms, uh, we have triple rooms, we have apartments. Uh, we have pod style living. Um, so, uh, and each of those different opportunities have a different price point. Uh, for the academic year, some of them are around $10,000. Uh, some are more expensive. Obviously, if, uh, if you have your own room, there will be a cost associated with that convenience. And so it really depends on the student and where it is that they prefer to live. Um, again, like SCAD, we, are, we do not require students to live on campus. It is very convenient because Los Angeles is a large city uh, and you can roll out of bed and roll to class. There's a convenience to that of not having to drive in traffic, look for parking, walk to class, etc. So it is convenient. There are living options right off campus. And generally speaking, those would most likely be if you were living by yourself much more expensive uh, if you are one of those guys that likes to live with seven people in one apartment, it could be significantly cheaper. So if you are cost sensitive, another idea 
would also be to consider the option of uh, becoming a resident advisor. So basically it's an upperclassman in one floor responsible for one floor in a dorm. And you're advising those uh, first year, maybe second year students, um, how to navigate life uh, as a first year or second year student, how to change their classes, how to cope with uh, multiple demands. So you get free rent and you get free food and you get pocket money. So you're paid hourly on a rate of 20 hours per week. So if you were looking to offset some of your costs, many universities do have that opportunity to uh, apply to become a resident director. And it is a fabulous opportunity also as you are mentored to become a leader. So just some opportunities to think about when you're, when you're approaching the idea of where to live uh, on or off campus. Very good. So we have a question. Um, what happens if due to the pandemic, I cannot take the SAT or ACT in my country, but I want to apply for this merit based scholarships that require the ACT or ACT? Well, you know, um, this is what we publish right? We publish that the SAT is required for merit-based scholarships, but it's very much like um, we're building a spaceship, you know, as we're writing our plans while it's taking off. So while we say that we will require definitely an SAT for consideration for merit-based scholarship, frankly, none of us know because we don't know the ratio of students that are going to have the availability to take these tests. And we refuse to penalize students for something that is clearly out of their control. So this is what we say, right? But again, we're still writing the playbook as we're playing the game. So have a little patience and know that we are being flexible. We are looking to um, incentivize very well-prepared students, talented students to come to campus. So as we are moving through this process, just know that um, flexibility is the name of the game, even on our side of the desk. How is it, how are in things case, at SCAD? In our case, it's very similar. SCAD has become test optional for the fall for students who are US citizens or US permanent residents. For international students in the first place, we do not require SAT. So if you want to submit it, I always encourage my students to do so if you have taken the test. But if you if you couldn't, given the situation, um, for international students, you don't require it. For US citizens, we are being test optional for fall 2020. Very good. Another question is that in their country, they only have until um, 11th grade and they want to know if it is accepted, um, considering that most high schools go until 12th grade in the United States. In know. our case, that's GAD. <laughs> in our case, that's GAD. We require the last four years of high school for your transcript. So when we say, for example, final junior transcript, in your case, it would be until grade 10. So because you graduated in 11th grade, pretty much we're not going to require you to find an extra year to do because we do look at your transcripts and at, and at the education system you're coming from. So that wouldn't be a problem so long as you're completing high school. Yes. Right. So going off of, yeah, go for it, Christy. And that's the, that's the same at Loyola Marymount. That's the same at many different institutions across the country. What we are looking for is that you have completed secondary school in your home country. If it's 11 years, if it's 12 years, fabulous. If it's 13 years, we will even give you credit for that 13th year probably, depending on your scores. So uh, again, we are just looking to see that you have access to higher education um, at your in your home country. Mm -hmm. So someone asked if there is a solution if they want to study college in the United States, but their school does not offer AP classes. So I was going to go ahead and answer that. Um, 
you are not required to be in neither an AP or an IB program to apply to US colleges and universities because that would be unfair because they're not offered at all uh, high schools around the world. Um, I, for example, had AP at my high school, but not IB. And so many times international students have the misconception that they have to have AP or IB to apply, which is not true. Um, if you do have it, you could potentially get some college credit ahead of time, but it is not a requirement if you want to apply to U.S. colleges and universities. As Christy said, you have to um, be in the process of or have finished secondary school according to the education system in your country. Along the same lines, there's a question for Alex if um, SCAD accepts IB credit or IB diplomas. We do. Um, it will depend on the subject that you took and the scores, of course. Um, it's also in our website. If you look into search IB, you can have the whole list of subjects, what score you're supposed to obtain, and what credit you could potentially get. If you take, for example, English a higher level with a score of five or higher, you would be automatically English exempt, so that would count as your proof of English and as an English and composition class. If you take, for example, um, biology, it could count as a science elective course in terms of the credits. So I would encourage you to check um, in our website the list of courses because it's quite extensive. We do offer credits um, depending on the subject. Very good. And then Christy, does LMU have a men's swimming team? Oh, I don't know where she went. Okay. And she's back. So that I'm gonna I'm gonna do another question when we get Chrissy. I think she's back now. Um, Chrissy, hi, hello. We wanted to know if LMU has a men's swimming team. Hello. Hi. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let's see. We have a women's swimming team. We have a men's water polo team. Okay. Wonderful. And I'm sure that you, on your website, you can find a list of all the sports teams that you have. Indeed. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Um, and then another question someone had was, can we enroll to universities three years after graduating from high school? Um, so I think there's two possible questions in this in this question. If you have graduated from high school and have not begun any university in your in your country you can 100 percent apply there's no age limit for education and you would be applying as a first year student a freshman which typically there are more um scholarship opportunities available for for first year freshman students if you're asking if you can apply to university three years after you graduated and three years of being in university in your country you can still do so but at this point you'd be a transfer student which means that you're going to try and um, validate some of the credits from your home country and the home university to not start from zero at the first at the university in the united states and finish your degree at the university in the united states um, we have another question for both universities so maybe alex could go first what is the average necessary GPA to be eligible or considered for scholarship at SCAD? For academic scholarship, the minimum average GPA is 3.0 in a scale of four. Okay. Um, it goes really by range from about $2,000 a year to full tuition based okay. on 3.0 or higher. It will really depend on the amount um, of that extra GPA. Right. Just be aware that full tuitions are not only dependent on a 4.0. Right, exactly. Most universities and colleges have holistic evaluations, which mean they do not just consider your high school grades or just your SAT or ACT, but they consider letters of recommendation, your essays, extracurricular activities. So all of these things are important. Christy, could you um, comment on what that the general GPA is necessary to get a merit-based scholarship at Loyola Marymount? Sure. Now, the average weighted GPA of all students, so 50 percentile, it ranges between 3.8 to 3.9 every year. Okay. Now, in, that's 50 percentile. Now, if you're talking the most generous scholarships, we are um, looking at that top 1 percent. And so, 
without uh, a doubt, um, these students have the top grades. Um, now, if you're looking at, and these are uh, awards that cover tuition, room and board, and a lot of fees and sometimes books. Um, so very, very generous and very, very challenging uh, competitive scholarships. So for our global scholarship, it's a lot more holistic of a review. We are not only looking at academic preparation, which is very important, probably the most important um, in grades, not your, your SAT or ACT is not required for this type of scholarship. We're also looking for students that are doing something amazing in their community. And whether that's uh, within their school and supporting the administration of their school or, um, or their community. Um, we're also looking for diversity. So if you come from a, a tiny country where we don't have uh, students represented, we will look to incentivize those students to come. So it's a little bit less about the numbers, even though the numbers are important because it is a scholarship based on your, your scholarly work, um, but it's also who you are as a person. So um, I couldn't give a threshold as every year it's different. Uh, but I can tell you that we had about 2,000 applications for about 150 international spots. Right. Kind so of gives you a little bit of an idea of the competitive nature, right? even for scholarships. So it's very important when you're looking for colleges and universities to look at the student profile that they're asking for to see if you would be compatible and you would be a good fit at that university as well. We don't want you to go to a university where you would struggle academically and we also don't want you to go to a university where you feel as um, there's not enough academic challenge. Um, so you can always come to us in Education USA if you need help understanding what is a GPA, all of those things when you're looking at the universities. Um, and we have two more questions here. Um, if I study my first semester in my country, is it possible to transfer and have credit for the classes I took? Yes, that is the definition of a transfer student, um, but there is no um, certainty or 100% uh, um, knowledge that the university will accept all the credits that you took, right? So maybe your home institution has um, biology 100, but um, that's a bad example. Maybe your home institution has like graphic design too, but the institution you're going to does not. So then they will not give you credit for that class, right? Um, it is important, as I mentioned, to note that transfer students typically have less opportunity for scholarships than first year freshmen, but it is still possible. Um, I'm not sure if, if Alex or Christy have anything to add in terms of transfer students or the transfer process. Um, for transfer students, we do offer uh, the same scholarships as for oh, freshman good. students, um, both academic, artistic, and need-based if they're inter international students. Um, based on the credits, yes, it, it's absolutely true. We cannot guarantee any transfer of credit until we see not only the transcript, but also sometimes the course descriptions or the syllabi of courses. It will be, de be dependent also on accreditation of the university where you're coming from, what program, and many other variables. Um, and generally, this happens after you have applied and you have been admitted to the university. Right, perfect. So scholarships for transfer students are indeed more modest. Um, and understand that if you have transferred from a community college within California, um, you would be uh, within the norm, 50% of Californians take that route. Um, so there would be a significant savings um, in that a community college is much uh, more affordable. Um, however, there are scholarships available for both scholarship and talent. Um, so if you are a student that falls under that category, um, I would reach out to one of us to see what the policy is. If you transfer from a California community college, it is highly likely that Loyola Marymount has an articulation agreement with that college. And you could see on the website, ours and theirs, if you take English 101, you get 
English composition at LMU. So you can see exactly the courses that you're getting credit for. So you can keep an eye on um, the courses that you should take in order to fulfill the requirements. So it is a fabulous way also as a, to way, a way to, uh, to save money if you are more of a cost uh, sensitive uh, applicant. Even and though there isn't those generous scholarships available, it could be a considerable um, savings. And one final question. A student is planning to, uh, to finish their high school in the United States and they would like to know if there are any advantages or disadvantages to finishing their high school um, in the U.S. before uh, applying to U.S. universities and colleges. It will depend. Um, it will depend, I guess, on the institution. That's a, a very it depends answer, um, especially because some universities do have in-state and out-of-state tuition costs and whatnot. And if you have already been in the U.S. for a while, you may be considered for in-state tuition. Um, at SCAD, we don't make that difference. So in terms of advantages, we don't differentiate um, a domestic student from an international student, except when it comes to the SAT, pretty much. Um, Scholarship-wise, they're very, very similar. Um, the requirements for application are the same, um, even for additional requirements. So in our case, really, there's no specific advantage or disadvantage um, to finishing high school in the US. I would approach that question with a why i would i would be asking more of what is that motivating factor to finish high school in the us now i would i see this a lot because um i've been in admission for a number of years now um students think that it's an advantage and maybe in your case it is an advantage but any transition is difficult and when you're going from one language as your language of instruction to another language as your language of instruction out of experience, that is a challenge, even if you have a high level of both. And so I would say um, if you want to go for the experience, absolutely. If you know that you can perform on par with how you're performing um, in your home country, fabulous, go for it. Um, if you are on uh, skate or if you are uninterested in perhaps a dip in your GPA, which I see a lot when students transition from their home country to the US during that transition period, then fabulous. But just know that uh, a dip in your scoring could happen because a, of a transition and it has really nothing to do with you and your intellectual capabilities. It's a transition. And so I would say, um, as you're approaching this idea, um, weigh out these, these topics, these issues as, as making that transition could put a barrier to your offer of admission or perhaps the level of scholarship that you're offered if you're not performing on par. So if you're going to perform better, fabulous, go for it. If, uh, if you are going to be performing, um, if you're going to go through that transition, I would say, think about it. Right, so I think again, it's important just to keep in mind, um, it is not required as an international student to have IB or AP or graduate from a US high school, right? The universities and colleges recognize that you're international students. They know you come from different educational systems and they will ask for information to learn more about those educational systems, but it is not a requirement to have a high school degree from a US high school in order to apply to US universities and colleges. So you can perfectly apply from Bolivia, from Brazil, from Venezuela, with your high school degree from your country to US universities and colleges when you are also um, complying with the other requirements that they have, if they require the SAT or if they don't require the SAT. So I believe that is the end of our questions for today. Um, oh, we have one more. What is the difference between BA, BS, and BSE? So I personally have never heard of BSE. Have either of you heard of that? It's a Bachelor's of Science of Engineering. Oh, thank you. That was my guess, but I didn't want to guess incorrectly. Um, do you want to take the question, Chrissy or Alex? Sure. Uh -huh. sure. Mm -hmm. um, 
there's a BA and that's a bachelor's of arts. Generally, the concentration is going to be uh, more diverse in terms of the soft sciences with the hard sciences. Um, then a bachelor's of science, a BS, is uh, has a few more classes in the science and the hard sciences, so sciences and math, etc. Uh, and then obviously a BSE would be um, in engineering. So it would be a bachelor's of science of engineering. So it's just the types of courses that you're taking. It's slightly more focused on the maths and sciences while a BA is uh, focused on the arts. There are some universities that you can study math, for example, and you have a choice of studying a BA or getting a BS, BSM, right? A Bachelor's of Science in Math or a Bachelor's of Arts in Math. Uh, my nephew, for example, for example, studied math and he opted to do the BA in math so that he could incorporate more uh, courses in language and the arts. So, there's also other options. I think that's Alex was what is going to mention right now. Yes, in our case, for example, because we are an arts and design specific university, we don't offer BS, BSE. We do offer BAs and BFAs, which are the Bachelor of Fine Arts versus the Bachelor of Arts. And the difference, as Chrissy was saying, was the amount of classes in a certain area. Bachelor of Fine Arts tend to be more hands-on studio courses, um, more than the BA, which is a little more towards research within the arts, of course, in our case. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Alex. I think that is it for the day. I think Lena is probably going to connect soon. Um, I want to remind you all to take advantage of the handouts and um in brochures that were sent uh, i believe you will be getting a link to this webinar afterwards to review the information and if you need help in the process of applying to institutions like scad and loyola marymount please reach out to the closest education usa center to you we will be happy to help you and and any questions or or doubts that you have in the process thank you so much ladies this is lena from the pilot cabin I was referred to earlier as uh, in the chat as uh, my massive headphones make me look like a pilot. So it's been a pleasure being <laughs> on this flight around the US with our wonderful presenters. Uh, I personally learned a lot as, um, as an event organizer. I rarely have the time to actually go into so much details about your institution. So thank you, Alex, Christy, and Mo for your time today. It was really a pleasure hosting you. To everyone who has been with us from uh, mainly Latin America, but also Europe, Asia, and the US, we would like to thank you for your curiosity today. Stay tuned for more SRT webinars. Stay safe and enjoy one more video from Education USA. Goodbye for now, ladies, and hope to see you soon. Have a wonderful Bye. day. Bye. <laughs>